messages are anything that we want to tell an object what to do or how to operate. So if I press M on my keyboard, whoops, if I click on my Max Patch and then press M on my keyboard, I can type in here, right? Anything I want, woohoo. And also you noticed that when I started typing, I got these suggestions of possible messages and those are for um, the existing things that I have in my patch. So Max is trying to be really helpful to me right here. We'll delete that. Um, and notice these message boxes sort of look like, whoops, they sort of look like buttons. So I'm going to lock the patch and then I'll, uh, I'll zoom in here. And you can see that actually it looks like I can click on this. And actually I can, right? I'm clicking and nothing is happening because I haven't set this up to do anything, to go anywhere. Nothing can read this message coming out of the outlet. So let's get something that can read this message. Let's play some sound. This is, oh, it went all the way, why is it here? Sorry, it's flying around the page. Just slowly morph back over here to my messages. This is a playlist object that was automatically created. Where am I? Oh no, it's because I'm zoomed in. Goodness gracious, okay, here we go. This is a playlist object and uh, it's playing a recording of my son. Easy DAC, this is gonna go to the speaker. I'm gonna just make a live gain object so that we can control the volume here. It's just good practice. And put that there. Let's play this for you so you can hear what it's supposed to sound like. Uh-oh. Okay, there it is. Okay. So, what could we possibly tell this playlist object with a message? Well, there's a bunch of different things. Maybe we could try something that we understand already, like maybe pause. Okay, let's see if that works. I'm going to play. It worked. Okay, I wrote the word pause, I just typed it in, I sent that through the outlet, I clicked on this button, that sent the message pause to the playlist object, which understood it uh, to, to stop playing that audio signal. Great, I'm gonna make another one. We might assume that since pause worked, okay, maybe play will work. So I'm gonna do, go ahead and do this. Hmm. Play did not work. I clicked it, what's happening here? So though I can type anything I want, the object does not necessarily respond to anything that I want. Hmm. Play did not work because play is actually looking for another bit of information here. Play wants me to tell it which track to play. So if I say one, play one, this should work. Oh no, oh no, it didn't work. <laughs> Is that not what it's wanting? Okay, so here's how we can find out. This is my next thing to show you anyway. If you hover over this inlet or any inlet on any object and you right click, you should get this uh, menu of attributes and of messages that you can send into this object. So uh, play should be on here. Play's not on here. Oh, play and a variable. I thought that it would be the track. I guess I'm wrong about that. No. Maybe it's zero. Okay. All right. So what should we do? We should open the help file. This is a tangent that I didn't plan for. That's all right. Okay. Uh, playback. Resume. Resume will work. That's good to know. Uh, play a clip. One. Advanced. I'm going to show you time stretch and speed in just a second. Oh, man. Okay, this is actually way of a tangent that we really don't need to know. I, you, can play, uh, you can play on a playlist with an integer, which is how normal people do it. My example failed. There we go. If I just send a number one, it plays the first clip. Okay. Uh, and I don't know what variable is. I'm going to have to look that up. Another video, because in this video, we are moving on to changing the speed, okay? So in our list, we right-clicked, we got this menu, we saw that all of these were possible options. I 
It's very tiny. I'm sure you can't actually see them. One of them says speed, brackets, variable. Okay, so let's type speed. And if you're thinking about this, right, pause, we know what that means, pause and resume. Speed, if I tell a clip just, hey, speed, we don't, we don't naturally know what that means. This could, you know, it could be like, hey, speed up, I guess. Uh, but what we actually need is we need another, another bit of information, much like my play message was supposed to show you which bit of information to play. My speed message needs something else following it. So now, instead of just one element in my message, I need two elements. And I'm going to add a, a variable here for how fast I would like my clip to play. I'm going to put a two here. And now I'm going to send this, this message, which is now a list inside of a message box. That means more than one element, speed and then two, this list of two elements. I'm going to send that, OK? And then I'm going to resume and hope this Okay, it did. Now I have a super chipmunk baby. Speed two. So that's fine. That's all fine and good. If I wanted to change the speed to, let's say, half, I could go and retype this number, half, and uh, resume that. You're going to hear deep. What's the opposite of chipmunk baby? It's probably demon baby. I can't hear it very well because it's playing in the studio, and I'm, I've got the volume turned down, so there's no feedback. Is it actually playing? There we go. Oh, creepy. OK, so fine. I can change this number by typing it in. But actually, it's a bit boring. And it doesn't really accomplish much for me, because maybe what I want is to be able to change the speed based on something else. Or maybe I want a slider. Whoops. Maybe I want a slider that helps me change the speed. I don't know. Um, the idea here is that what I really need is a way to have this argument, this speed, uh, the number that follows speed. I need a, a way to replace that with a number quickly, with whatever number I want. So messages have this super nifty trick to them called replaceable arguments. And the, the way that the syntax for this is actually the dollar sign. So here's a dollar sign. And I'm going to say dollar sign one, and that is for the first element that you would like to replace. When I first learned about replaceable arguments, I had a, a really hard time with them. I remember just not understanding them at all. So I'm going to try my best to not have you go through that, that same experience here. OK, let me try. Speed, replaceable argument. I'm going to take now uh, a floating point box. I pressed F on my keyboard to get one of those. And uh, I'm going to play this. And I'm going to set my speed to normal, to 1, and slowly drag it up. OK, you can see it's getting faster, and then slower. So now I have a way of, in real time, changing the speed of my audio clip. 